Greetings, it is I, Tempest Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's time to continue our discussion on Werewolf the Apocalypse, set in the world of darkness. When we last left off, we were of course talking about the 13 tribes. I've got the last two tribes. I want to talk about some last tri lost tribes today, and Ronin. Let's talk about those last two tribes. The Uktena. The Uktena are werewolves, are one of the three major tribes which have been the guardians of North America. They're known to be very kind of sly and devious. They actually understand spirits better than any other Garou tribe. And unfortunately, this does mean it has lost, lo led to a lot of mistrust, that they keep their moots and their rituals incredibly secret. There are many Garou that believe they're already tainted by the worm. And it's the superstition, though, that actually keeps people from, keeps other Garou from actually directly finding out about it that it kind of protects them from others trying to figure out whether or not they're just safe and secretive or tainted by force. Now the next one, of course, is the Wendigo. They're the gray ghosts, existing within deep wildernesses far in the north of North America. They are, in fact, masters of survival, spirits, and war. They were nearly exterminated by the European Garou when they came along, that the Europeans and the kinfolk and the Gara themselves, their very like presence upon the continent caused their near extinction. They now exist in Taiga, far to the north, where they kind of eke out a living in their small groups, hoping to once again rebuild their numbers and perhaps reclaim a lot of the territory they've lost. Now let's talk about lost tribes. There have been many bloodlines, many tribes that have been lost into the battle against the worm, battle against the effects of the worm, and various other problems that have occurred along the way in the course of, of Garou history, of werewolf history. There are a few of those that stand out above all the others. Those are the ones I'm going to go over today. The White Howlers. Bards sing dirges for them, for the loss of this tribe. As a collective group, they drove themselves as warriors into this worm nest in order to defeat it and roust it. But upon emerging from it, the entire bloodline was cursed, tainted by the worm, and they no longer were the White Howlers. They became known as beings called the Black Spiral Dancers. These are a terrible enemy of Garu now, and the just the mention of the name White Howler has sort of become this curse upon the tongues of of werewolves, that the black spiral dancers aren't mentioned without, without helping to gain a curse upon your head. The Croatan were once a proud guardian of North America, but they did battle against a powerful worm beast known as, the, known as the Eater of Souls that had come along to North America from Europe by the group of Roanoke colonists, the lost Roanoke colony. They did battle with it, and to the last, they managed to slay it, finally, but every last one of them was slaughtered off, and the bloodline effectively driven to extinction. All that remains is a gnarled tree which now tells the tale of them in a way that only a Garo could understand, and the stories that are passed along of their great heroics and sacrifice in order to defeat back forces of the worm. The Bunyip. No Garo sings from them, not because of what had happened to cause their destruction, but because there's shame. Shame in what had occurred to the Bunyip, for it was not Worm which defeated Bunyip, but Garu. The Bunyip were native to Tasmania, and their flock was the Tasmanian tiger. If it wasn't for European Garu seeking out new lands, and with them, their kindred, the European folks coming to that land, they would have survived. But when they arrived in Tasmania, they waged a genocidal war against their flock and the Bunyip themselves, eliminating them completely. So it was indeed European Garu which drove them to extinction, something that, again, many regret, but none will speak of. Now let's talk about Ronin. As it has been seen with a stigma from Omi of Millennia, there have been always Garu that have been chosen to effectively break away from tribe and pack and family in order to become the lone warriors which are needed to defend the world in different places, to break themselves from the trappings of tradition in order to battle against the worm in their own way. These are the Ronin, and there is this stigma against them even though many have been both chosen and driven into this situation in order for, it to, for them to be in a position to do what is necessary. 
Though now when we reach the modern night days, there are more and more Ronin being created just for the generalization of the Garo which lose touch or are driven out of the tribes because of what they do. So the numbers of Ronin are swelling and not for the reasons that they used to. Now, the Ronin do have some advantages. They can still learn gifts and they don't have the trappings of rank. They would need some kind of mentor, which of course, with enough de would trading deals or perhaps finding some kind of payment they would receive or something similar, you can convince pretty much any mentor to perhaps teach you some gifts. But again, they don't have to worry about rank. They don't have the trappings of the society. So though they are no longer connected and lose a lot of that, and it is more difficult for them to learn gifts, they can still journey down the path of becoming a werewolf and getting the abilities they need to get more powerful. They can gain the ranks without having to worry about the societal implications of said ranks. Unfortunately, even now in days, the Ronin are beginning to suffer more. Many are going crazy. Some are going worm-tainted. Stories of man-eating werewolves are oftentimes the result of Ronin that are out there and go upon rampage and stuff before they are stalked by their kin. Now let's talk about kinfolk. Now, Garo must of course mate with human or wolf in order to reproduce properly. Of course, they could meet Garo to Garo could reproduce, but it grows a metis, something that's sterile. Reproducing with the other two, it's a recessive gene to be a werewolf, which means there's a one in a basically a great chance that the person that's going to be born or creature that's going to be born is going to be, of course, not a normal species of that, a normal human, a normal wolf. They are the kinfolk. Now, this becomes very important when it comes to humans. A kinfolk is immune to delirium. That's what they get as an advantage. The big one is they are immune to delirium. So kinfolk oftentimes will be used by their werewolf brethren. They effectively, because they carry the bloodline, they can be used as an advantage, as connections with human society. And kinfolk are often trying to try to put into positions of power within human society so that they can give influence for the werewolves. Vampires have been opposing this, especially because this is trying to moving into their power basis. Because again, they have always been ingrained into human society much more. But with this modern day, it's almost been needed. Werewolves need this connection to the modern human society because of the nature of it. And so you need this. Now, as I said, most kinfolk, the only special abilities they get is the ability to not go crazy, not to have delirium. But there are a few rare exceptions which have been known to be able to gain both gnosis and rage. Now, it's hard to say if any of these would ever gain them, but because they have them, these kinfolk could learn gifts. Who would teach them? That's a good question. It would probably require some kind of situation in which one would learn one. But regardless, they can. So that's it for today. I finished talking about the last two tribes of, of the 13 tribes of Garo, and I talked about three lost tribes. Two that died out to the worm. One that was corrupted by it, one that died in epic battle, and a tribe that died to fellow Garo, one that's more tragic. I then talked about, of course, Ronin, singular Garo who no longer have the same trappings of connections as the other brethren. And I talked about kinfolk, the humans and wolves that are of the blood of Garu, who are used in their societies, well, mainly human society, in order to get the connections to the world that Garu sometimes cannot have. In the next episode, I'm going to talk all about moots, the cosmology of the werewolf universe, and start talking about the geography, different areas of the world and what it means to being a werewolf in that area. So if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows your support for the channel, the empire, and the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.